Hello, we're going to be looking at the two boom Bluetooth speaker, the BT488. This speaker may not be um, the same as one you've got, but stick around because some of these features on here may be on your speaker, and I'm going to show you how to use them. All right, let's take a look at what we've got. We're looking at two boom BT488. This speaker, as you can see, uh, is a pretty nice looking speaker. It's going to have some features on here that I want to quickly go over before we start. It's got the dual function buttons on the top. Dual function, I'm referring to, uh, it has two functions. The one function you can activate by a short press. The other you can activate by a long press. Um, and um, we're going to see that you're going to see that demonstrated as we go through. Uh, the other thing is I want to take a look at the back of it. And on the back, you're going to see a USB port. Uh, you're going to see the charging port, auxiliary port. Of course, there's an on-off switch. And then we've also got the TF or the micro SD. The USB and the micro SD or TF can be used to play music. And we're going to go over that. We're going to show you how to format and load up your USB or your micro SD so you can play music on them. Two things I want to share with you and that is that on this particular model um, we have one of the features which is a notification voice and I want you to hear what's going on with this notification voice. Let me turn it on here. Power on. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're talking about a very loud voice. I've checked it out. I've tried to find a way to lower or decrease the volume on the voice notification. Got it. We're stuck with it. That's just the way it is. It's hardwired into the, uh, into the chip. So, the other thing is the lights. Now, the lights come on. I would have liked for them to have defaulted with the lights off and then for me to turn them on, but that's not the case. So, now when I turn this on, I'm going to have to turn it off and I do that by holding down long press on the play button which is in between the plus and the minus buttons. So I hold this down and the lights go out. Now this is good. I can live with this. Okay, I can live with this. Because I'm going to be using this in my shop or I'm going to be using it in the office and I'm going to have it off and I don't want to see that in my periphery flashing. You know, it's it's not even like it's with uh, in time with the music. It's just a sequence of lights, and it goes through its sequence, and it repeats the sequence. So it has nothing to do with uh, what's coming through as far as the music. It's just lights flashing, you know. So uh, the uh, charging on this, um, I want to point out something about charging. When you plug in your charging cord... When you do plug it in, you're going to see a, a red light come on. When the red light goes off, it's done charging, you can unplug it. How long does it take to charge? Okay, with charging, for me, it took an hour and a half. But, I'll give you a heads up. And what happened on the box, what, what it reads on the box is, the box says, charging time, two to three hours. Okay. Play time is one to two hours. So I'm going to be charging longer than I'm playing. That doesn't sound right. It sounds to me like that's a typo. And I'm pretty sure it is. Because it took me an hour and a half to charge it up. Again, you plug it in. The red light comes on. When the red light goes off, you're done charging. But to give you an example, I one of the reasons why I got this is so I could play the FM radio on it. There's an FM tuner built in. So I got my radio and I started playing and you know, and I'm listening to, and the volume wasn't up high, but enough for me to hear it. And I got seven and a half hours playtime out of it. No, yeah, seven and a half hours playtime. Hour and a half to charge it, seven and a half hours to play. That sounds a little more reasonable, uh, but it's also going to be dependent upon your playtime. Is going to be dependent upon. Um, what you're doing. I mean, if you're playing the lights, you like the lights flashing, or you got the volume up high, that's going to draw more battery. You're going to be getting less playtime with it. Um, 
charging time. Now, charging time is really dependent upon what kind of blocks you've got around. I've got a bunch of blocks laying around my house from old phones, and I've got I've got uh, blocks that uh, out the output the output is for this one is five volts 0.7 amps. For this one, it's uh, five volts one amp. I've got another one that's five volts 1.55 amp. And I got this last one here, which is 5 volts, 1.8 amp. Um, so, the uh, the more amperage output, the faster it's going to be. I don't know what the car port is in my car, but I know when I really want to fast charge, I'll, I'll bring my phone out to the car and I'll charge it off my uh, the power point and power port in my car. So it all depends on how much uh, output you've got going on. Uh, so. I'm just saying all blocks are not the same, all charging blocks are not the same. The other thing I want to talk about is range. The, um, you know, I've got things around my shop, and one of those things, I never, didn't know if I was ever going to need it, but I got it. I got this 200 foot tape, this 200 foot measuring tape. It's one of those things, and I can't remember the last time I've used it. But, um, I wanted to see what kind of range I was going to get. So I got, I blue jacked into my phone. Um, you know, I paired up with my phone, the speaker with my phone. And I put the phone down on my uh, table. And then I took my tape and Bluetooth speaker under my arm and attached the tape down and walked out with it and put myself, put, put our van in between myself and the Bluetooth speaker. I mean, excuse me, my phone. And I got it to about I got to about 35 feet. 35 feet when it until it started then it started getting choppy and I, as soon as it started getting choppy I didn't want to lose the signal so I just backed up and so I'm talking like 35 feet. The other test I did was to I wanted to go out the side. I wanted to go to the side of my shop. So again, from where my phone was sitting, I measured from there to the wall, got on the other side of the wall, took my tape and I walked out with it and I got into the neighbor's yard I got 83 feet so it varies what varies what makes it uh, you know longer or shorter as far as keeping the signal is any obstacles that are in the way and the reason why I'm telling you this is because if you are trying to pair up with a device and you've got other devices in the area that are in Bluetooth enabled or discovery mode you may connect to them it happened to me it happened to me when I was upstairs and I was trying to connect. It kept telling me the Bluetooth device is paired or connected. And I was getting no action coming out of it until I realized, oh, wait a minute. I've got my, uh, my laptops downstairs in my office. Let me run down there. And sure enough, they were connecting and it was interrupting. So that may happen to you. I want to mention that to you. Make sure there's no things in the way that, uh, that are going to pair up and just kind of confuse you as to why it's saying it's connected but it's not. Alright, so let's talk about pairing up with the phone. First we're going to do the phone. The phone is the easiest. i got to tell you that. The phone is the easiest. Uh, so here I'm going to get my phone up and I'm going to try and show you as best I can. Because um, of course we all know not all phones are the same as far as you know, there's certain variables on the um, operating system, even though they're all Android, depending, it, it's, they're different. So on my phone, what I can do is I can go into all my apps by just wiping up from the bottom, and there I've got all my apps in there. Look for the settings icon. The settings icon is going to look like this. I've got this alone on my uh, desktop on my phone. There it is. That's the settings icon you're going to be looking for. Go ahead and tap on that. In this, what you're going to get is, you're going to see settings. This is on my phone. It may not be the same on yours. Go to connections. You see it on connections. Go to connections. Third one down on me right here is Bluetooth. I'm going to go to Bluetooth. And there it is. Now it's currently in off. Currently it's off. But I want to show you another way. Another way to get in there. The other way, at least on my phone, is I can swipe down and pull a menu down from the top. Swipe down from the top, and you'll have these settings. One of the icons is going to be Bluetooth. 
long press, hold it, long press on it, and it'll come up. And now we're going to be back to where we were, where we were just now. All right, so that's a shorter way to do it. You get in there, the menu that swipes down from the top. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my speaker on. Power on. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. All right, so now I'm going to hit, I'm going to turn it on. It's going to go into scan mode. You can't really see it that well. But it says, make sure the device you want to connect to is in pairing mode. All right, and there it is. It came up. When it comes up, you just tap on it. It comes up with a question. It says, Bluetooth pairing request. Pair with Tuboom BT488. That's this device. I'm going to click OK. It's connecting. Just give it a second. Let's be patient with it. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. And there you have it. Now, the next time, once you've connected it the first time, uh, the next time is going to be a lot quicker. So, uh, I know it took a little while. You know, in, in YouTube time, it took forever, I'm sure. Uh, but there it is now that you're connected. So let's take, let's listen up for, um, I'm going to play some music. I'm playing classical music because it's not copyrighted. I don't have to worry about somebody uh, want me to pay money for playing this. I can decrease the volume. I can increase the volume by pressing on the minus button here to decrease. Hold it, hold it, hold it. There you go. Or I can increase the volume by holding, hit, hitting the plus button. Long press. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Here we go. It's getting louder. Okay. And of course, it's intuitive. Once you get to the volume level you want, you just let go. So there we have it with that. So now we're connected into our phone, which is, as I said, how's that? As I said, it was really easy to get into the phone. Not a problem at all. Now let's talk about getting connected to your PC or your laptop. Be sure your PC or your laptop is Bluetooth compatible. Um, quick way for you to figure out if you've got Bluetooth compatible on your laptop or your PC is by going in and looking to see if your Bluetooth switch can be turned on or off. Now, before we go there, before I show you that, because once I show you that, I'm going to keep moving on with how to how to connect. If you you're convinced you're not Bluetooth compatible with your device, with your PC or your laptop, there is an adapter you can get you can buy, and I'm going to show you. This is what the adapter looks like. Right here. Um, let me let me widen my screen a little bit. Sorry about that. So you can see me a little better here. This is what the Bluetooth adapter looks like. I'm going to leave a link to a fellow that will give you a two-minute instruction on how to install one of these. You buy them. It comes with drivers. Um, if you need to use the drivers, you you have them. You'll have them. But uh, you know, typically these are just plug and play. You plug plug it into the USB port, one of your empty USB ports, and now your system will find it and you'll be Bluetooth compatible. So if you don't have Bluetooth compatibility on your PC or your laptop, get this thing called a dongle. It's called a dongle or a USB adapter and you'll be good to go on that. Um, so the other way you can, like I said, the way you can determine if you've, the way you can determine if you've got uh, Bluetooth compatible on your uh, PC or your laptop is by looking to see if you have a Bluetooth on off switch. So and I've tried this unit. I just pulled it out, pulled the USB adapter out of the Bluetooth adapter out of. Um, when I pull it out, the switch goes off. It turns off. It, it tells me it's no longer Bluetooth compatible. All right. So there's two ways you can get into your settings. You have to go into your Bluetooth settings, and there's two ways you can do that. Now the first way is by going to your notifications um, icon down here next to the time. Let's click on it. Bring it up. You may get these four buttons at the bottom. You may get those buttons. If you do, you need to expand. Let's click on expand and I'll show you what happens. We've got more buttons now. More buttons to choose from. And in and amongst those buttons is the Bluetooth button. 
Bluetooth. You're not going to click on it. Click, clicking on it is going to turn it on turn it off. We want to go into the settings. We want to see, we want to observe what's going on. So let's right click on that. And your drop down, your drop down menu is going to say, go to settings. All right, so let's click on that. Let's give it a second. And there you have it. Going into settings. And there we are. Now, I waited this long to tell you this because it's very simple. If you're not sure you're Bluetooth compatible, go into your settings and you will not see, if it's not Bluetooth compatible, you will not see a Bluetooth button here because it's not Bluetooth compatible. That's how you can tell whether or not you need to go out and get the dongle, the USB Bluetooth adapter. All right, so here's another way. That's the first way I wanted to show you that. Go into your notifications, right click on Bluetooth and go to settings. The other way you can do uh, or access settings, going into settings, is by clicking on your window. On the lower left corner here, the window, just click on that. And when it comes up, start typing Bluetooth. B-L-U-E-T-O-O-T-H. -O -O okay, good. As you're typing it, it'll come up. Usually I'll get to like the uh, the T, the, the, the T in, uh, right after blue, and it'll come up. I mean, it, it just, it's really quick. So here it is. Here's the access to Bluetooth and other devices settings. Go ahead and click on that. All right. All right. There we have it. Now, before I go any further, I want to make this even easier on you on how to get here and how to access this. This item right here that's highlighted says Bluetooth and other devices. Right click on that. You're going to get a menu. It's going to drop down. It's going to say pin to start. So go ahead, pin to start. Do that. And it says, do you want to pin this tile to start? Yeah. Yes, of course. So let's get out of there. Let me show you what happened. Click on the window. And now there it is. There it is. It's on start. So I can click and drag this over to where I want it to go. There it is. Now whenever I need to access control uh, settings for Bluetooth, th there it is. I can just click on that. All right, so now you have two ways that you can get into. Um, th there's two ways you can access Bluetooth settings. You can uh, click on the notifications tab. Uh, you can right click on Bluetooth, uh, one of the buttons that comes up. Or you can click on the start window. And there it is in the start, uh, pin to start. Uh, it's there waiting for you. Go ahead and click on that. And let's wait a second for it to come up. All right. So let's get Mr. Loud Voice here going again. Uh, Power on. All right. So let's turn on our Bluetooth. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Let's click on Add Bluetooth or Other Devices. Click on Bluetooth. It's going to be scanning now, looking for it. And there it is. It came up. So once you've got it to come, to come up, go ahead and click on it. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. Okay, good. I'm happy. That's good. But there's something I want you to I want you to see. Just below the name of the device, it says connected voice and music. Please remember that. Remember that because the next thing we're going to be looking at is when you when it says that you're connected and you're not. There's there's a way to get around that. All right. So here we are. We're connected voice and music, and let's let's present a scenario. All right, so here, here's our scenario. We're done for the day. Um, we're finished listening to music or doing whatever we want to do on the computer. And all right, we're gonna, we're gonna shut down for the day or whatever. We're gonna walk away. And I'm gonna turn off my speaker because I don't want to waste the battery. So let me turn it off. Turning it off. And let's, let's uh, duplicate our scenario here. Let's let's go through the steps. Um. Anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the screen up so you can see what's going on. Now, right now, I've turned the speaker off, and it says connected voice and music. So now I've come back. Like I said, I'm leaving this up so you can see what's going on. Come back from doing whatever. You turn the speaker back on. Mr. Loud Voice is going to say whatever. Power on. Yeah. The Bluetooth device okay. is ready to pair. Okay. Good. 
and let it wait. Let's let's wait for it. Let's let's be patient about this whole thing. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. Okay, good. Now the, it says the Bluetooth device is connected successfully, and I'm anticipating that uh, my uh, music will come through here, but it's not. So there's a problem. And the problem is, if it says connected voice, you're not going to get the action from it that you want. It's got to say connected voice and music. So the way to way to get around that is turn off the Bluetooth, turn it back on. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. All right. Now, if you notice, it says connected voice and music. So let's go ahead and test that. Are we really connected so I can play music? Let's play some Mozart. All right, so turn it on. All right, so basically that's what I wanted to show you. That there are times when you reconnect with your Bluetooth speaker into your, your laptop or your PC, and it says it's connected, but it's not. Well, when it does that, check. Check your settings. Make sure it says connected voice and music. If it doesn't say connected voice and music, just simply turn off the Bluetooth, turn it back on. That's why it's important. I want to show you the notifications over here. When you open up not notifications, with this, if you don't right-click on it to get that menu, as I showed you the first time through, you can left-click and just turn it on, turn it off. Okay? So, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Turn it off. Turn it back on. You see me clicking over here. There we go. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. There you go. So instead of going into your settings, eh, just try it. You're saying, wait a minute, I should have been playing music by now. Or I've got the music playing and it's coming through my onboard speakers. It should be coming through my really new, uh, new toy I got, this Bluetooth speaker. So go ahead and turn it off, turn it on, and you should be okay. So like I said, again, I want to point out, it's got to say connected voice and music. Otherwise, it's not going to be connected. So let me turn this off. And I think I covered everything on that. Okay, the other thing I wanted to share with you, and let's, let's open me up here so you can see me a little better. Uh, the other thing I wanted to share with you was the um, auxiliary cord. Now this particular model, I gotta tell you, this particular model. Let, let me uh, let me switch screens over here. Um, this particular model has a design flaw. Yeah, it's got a design flaw. The design flaw is this. Now, before I even go there, let, let's let's take a look. On the directions, it says I can toggle through the mode switch using the mode switch. I can go through. I can go to uh, Bluetooth, FM, USB, and TF. Well, when I was hitting the mode uh, switch button, it was giving me just Bluetooth and radio. Well, I was expecting other functions too. Well, those other functions don't are not accessible until you've got something in that port. So if I have something plugged into the auxiliary port, it'll know something's plugged in, and it'll give me a chance to toggle through and select Bluetooth, radio, auxiliary. Same thing with if I'm plugged into the USB port with a USB drive or into the TF with a micro SD, it'll know the device is there and you can toggle through and it'll know and it'll say. So what I'm saying is something's got to be in the port for it to be active for you to select it. All right, so here's the thing with the auxiliary cord. Um, make sure I got my stuff handy. Um, the auxiliary cord here is my normal procedure is you just plug it in auxiliary input mode the Bluetooth device is ready to pair all right so here's here's the problem there's something a little loose about that connection because when I plug it in auxiliary input mode the Bluetooth device is ready to pair hmm Radio mode. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. 
radio mode. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Wait a minute. And here's what happens. Auxiliary input mode. All right. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Now here's what here's what I discovered. I plug it in. It says Bluetooth uh, mode, but it's not supposed to say that. It's supposed to say auxiliary mode. So mm -hmm. what I discovered was, if I pull it out just a little bit, just a auxiliary little bit. Auxiliary input mode. And there is auxiliary input mode. All right. So here's what I did, just to test this out. I'm thinking, you know what? I pulled it out just a little bit. Now it's telling me auxiliary input mode. All right. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. I went and got a, a washer, very small washer, smallest one I could find, very thin. Put it onto the jack. Auxiliary input mode. And there it is. No, pull it out again. Let's put it in. The again. Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Okay, yeah. Auxiliary input, input mode. mode. So every time I put it in there, it's going to tell me auxiliary mode because there is a design flaw on this. This this device has a design flaw. It requires that I pull out just a little bit. It's not. It's going in too far. It's going past the connection it needs to touch in order for it to be in auxiliary mode. So again, pull this out. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. And let's put it in auxiliary input, input mode. mode. All right. So, I didn't like the idea of using a washer because you know what's going to happen. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Yeah, you're going to lose the washer. So, let me turn this off. Here's what I did. Here's another one of those, one of those things I got around the shop. It's a eighth inch thick foam uh, adhesive on one side. And, yes, indeed, I found a need for this. So, what I did was <clears throat> I took a pencil and I poked through the backing, the paper backing, to make sure I was coming through on the other side. I grabbed my jack, pushed it into the hole to make sure the jack was going to fit. Okay. Then I took this washer, let's get this washer on there, put it through the hole with the washer on it. And while the washer was there, I took my pencil and I drew, I drew around um, the washer. Drew around the washer all the way around so I could see where I was going to cut, need to cut. And I went ahead and cut out the piece I needed. Once I got it cut out, I went ahead and put the the foam onto the, the jack, all right, and plugged it into the speaker. After pulling off the paper, oh, pull the paper off, then plug it in. All right, so what I got, what I got was is what you see here with this speaker. This little foam thing is now attached to it. Get as close as possible. There we go. And it's sticking on there. It's staying on there. It's not going to fall off. Now, let me turn this guy on. Power on. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. All right, let's plug it in. Auxiliary input mm -hmm. mode. I like it. I like it a lot. This is a good workaround for this. It gives stability for the, the jackets that's in there. The foam helps it become stable. So that's good. I don't know how long it's going to last, to be honest with you. But I've got more. So, And I'm really not going to be using auxiliary cord, you know, that much. So um, it probably is going to last me a very long time. But at this point, I could go ahead and I can jack into my PC or my laptop or I can plug into my uh, phone and I'm good to go. Alright. So the workaround works. That's a beautiful thing. The other th thing we want to talk about is the USB. Getting your USB ready so that you can play music. Alright, let's talk about USB. Uh, thumb drive. Uh, some terms used commonly are thumb drive, memory stick, uh, pen drive, flash drive, but USB drive is what I'm talking about. Um, I had a problem with a particular brand. I have this one brand, and the procedure I'm going to show you on how to uh, format these and load them up with music, I used the procedure on all of the USB drives I've got. 
these, I thought maybe one of them was not working right. I've got two of the same brand. They both did the same thing. It would not respond. When I was ready to play my music, it wouldn't play. But, and I went out and bought two others. And now I've got four different brands. Four different brands of USB drives, and they all work fine. So I'm telling you this because you may follow this procedure and it's not working. It's not the procedure. It's something to do with, it may be something to do with that particular device. So keep that in mind. All right, so I'm gonna show you USB and I'm gonna show you micro SD on how to get these things ready for playing music because it's not just a matter of, in some situations, it's not just a matter of loading up music. All right, <clears throat> so first let me take a look at the micro SD. Um, I've got mine nested inside this um, SD adapter and you're going to when you use this, like I said, the procedure for this is the same as the uh, USB drive. I'm going to show you using the USB drive because it's a lot easier to access the port. So anyway, um, the micro SD or the TF, as it's also known, when you use this, you're going to plug it into your speaker with the contacts up. Plug it into your speaker. Go ahead and press on it until you hear it click. I'm not sure if you could hear that, but it clicked. And now it's in there. So what's going to happen is you'll turn on power on music mode. Music mode. There you go. And you can bounce between files using the minus or the plus. Let me get rid of this. Okay. All right. So you get the point. So now we're in there. Um, one thing came to mind, and I want to share that with you before I forget it, and that was I'm not going to be using the um, US, uh, micro SD as much as I'm going to be using the USB drive because it's easier to handle, but something came to mind while I was working with this, and um, I realized I could load up music on my micro SD, and I could leave it on here all the time. Because the only time I'm going to access it is when I toggle through on the mode button, the mode switch. I'm going to, mainly I'll be using Bluetooth or FM radio. Actually, I think I'm going to be using more so of the FM radio. Um, so I can leave it in there, and if I ever wanted to listen to music, I can just go mode switch and click over to my um, micro SD that's already on board. But if I want to change up and use different music, I can use the USB drive. So let's get into it. Let's talk about... Um, let me take this out one moment. Okay, take this out. I want to get this uh, put to the side here. Good. All right, yeah, much easier to handle this larger uh, card than the little tiny micro SD, but you understand what I'm saying. All right, so we're going to format and load up music on the USB drive. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do when you're going to get this USB drive or your micro SD um, ready is you're gonna insert, insert into your PC or your laptop. Oh, and there's something I forgot, and that was if you're not, if you don't have a uh, SD port on your laptop or computer, you can get a peripheral device that you can add on using accessing USB, and it'll it's a card reader. Look them up online. You can put an SD card in here. Uh, this one, this particular model has a spot for the TF, um, so you can go ahead and plug right into it. All right, so uh, you can SD here, you can TF over here. Either way, if you don't have access to that, you can get a peripheral a peripheral device that will do it. So I wanted to share that with you. So uh, before we go any further, so I didn't, I didn't want to forget. All right. All right. So we're going to go into, and I'm going to get some music up here, music files up, and I'm going to put them over here off to the side. These are the files I want to copy over. I'm going to leave those there. So I'm going to take my USB. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. 
Give it a second, the system will recognize it. And when it recognizes it, it should bring up another window. And there we have it. <clears throat> so this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be getting our USB drive ready. We're going to have our another window open uh, with our files that we're going to copy over. Now to open up two windows, in case you don't know, is the little folder down here. If you right click on it, right click, uh, menu options will come up. Even though you've got the File Explorer window open, if you click on File Explorer, it will open up another window. So that's for those who may not know that. All right, so now that we're plugged into it, first thing I want you to know is that if you've got any files on here that you don't want, then go ahead and format it. If you've got files on here that you do want, then copy them off. Let's copy, copy them off, put them someplace safe, because when you format this thing, it's going to wipe out anything that's on there. Right now, I've got a file on here just for demonstration purposes. I've got a file that says, I don't need this file. So I don't need that file. So I'm going to highlight this. And as you see, it comes up with USB drive. I'm going to right click on this, right click on it. And the menu pops up. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go down, locate format. It says format. Go ahead, find that, click on it. Now here's your menu that comes up. Let's talk about this. Let's get the music folder out of the way. Now let's pull this over here. All right. Um, the first, the first box is the capacity. The second one is the file system you want to use. If you try using NTFS, now drop down here. You click on the down arrow uh, on the right hand side. You're going to get a drop down menu, and NTFS will not work for you. It will not work. I tried using NTFS. It loads on there. It does, uh, on some occasions, it'll recognize that there's a uh, USB drive in there. It'll say music mode. Um, and even, I even got to play a partial of a file. One of the music files played a partial of it, and then it just stopped. Another time I played it, it just started giving me this weird screeching noise, and I said, that's it. NTFS is not working for me, but if you use any of the FAT32, which this one says default, or EXFAT, Fat, Fat32, EXFAT, um, use those. Go ahead and do that. I'm going to use EXFAT for this. The allocation and unit size, you can select default allocation unit size uh, right here, the first one. But I looked online and they recommend, uh, those that know, recommend using the 4096 byte. The uh, volume label, this is an interesting thing right here. Volume label, let's say you want to load up your uh, USB drive with a particular artist, you know, like pick an artist and you know um, and you can put that in here as your volume label so for me I'm gonna put in classical classical music okay um, the option down below that is quick format make sure it's checked again I don't need this file uh, that's what's on there right now it's gonna wipe it out when it formats it so let's go ahead and start hit start it says formatting will erase all data on this disk to format the disk click OK to quit, click cancel. So let's click OK. I'm going to do that. Look how quick it was. It was really fast. If you don't have that quick format selected, it's going to take a very long time. Just trust me. It, it does. All right. So let's go ahead and close this. I'm going to open up this. I want another window open, so I'm going to right click on the folder. I'm going to click on File Explorer. Going to open up another window. There it is. But notice what it says. It no, lo no longer says USB drive, or in some cases, you'll have the name of the manufacturer as the volume label. This is what I named it classical. So that's what I'm, what I'm saying is if you load up your particular artist on here or, or an album you've got on here, you can name it that, which is good for easy identification. If you've got a bunch of these laying around, you can't remember which one has what. You can easily just plug it into your PC or your laptop, look for the label to come up, and you'll say, oh, okay, that's the one that's got, you know, easy identification. It's going to be better than writing on the writing on the actual device or creating a label for it. Just, it's already there. All right. So let's copy over. Let's select. Make sure that we're selected on the thumb drive, the 
uh, memory stick, the pen drive, the flash, whatever. It's a USB drive. Um, let's go ahead and select some music. Now, if you want to select all of the songs, the whole, the whole range of them, you can uh, anywhere below the last file, you can click and drag and highlight, and you can select them all that way. You can click on one, then go down to the last one, hold your shift key down, and select the last one. Shift key is the same as saying, I want to select the range, the whole range, okay? Um, if you wanted to select, just randomly select certain items, you can click on one, hold the control key down, control, and you can select randomly this one, I want that one, and I want this one. And once you've got them all selected, there's two things you can do. You can click and drag, hold on to one of them, just hover over, and you can drag over. You can put it in there, the folder, or you can right click on it. Menu will come up, say copy, and then you come over here, click on it, and say paste. It's going to do it that way too. So, I like the shortcut way of doing it. I'm going to be copying this one and these last two. I'm going to click and drag it over here and it's going to copy them over. And there you go. Now, I wanted, I did this purposefully. I wanted to show you this. This is what I got. And um, it says, there's a question that comes up. It says, are you sure you want to copy this file without its properties? And just say yes. It doesn't bother it one bit. Don't worry about it. It's not going to hurt it. You'll, you'll still be able to play it. Okay? All right. So, like I said, this is the same procedure you would use for the micro SD as well as the USB drive. Same procedure. No change at all. The only difference is the, de the, the device you're using. That's it. Same procedure. It's, it's going to work. But yes, format them both. Um, typically, when they come from the manufacturer, they come back. They come uh, already formatted with FAT. If you're having problems with it, use this procedure, and it should work for you. All right. So um, let's take a look. Let's yeah. Let's test our. Let's pull our USB out. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, let's plug it in. Now I, I formatted. Uh, put the music on there. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Make sure I got the right way. Let's turn on Mr. Loud Voice. <laughs> Power on. Okay. Music mode. You see it's flashing? Yeah. So here's our flashing light let me know it's accessing data on there all right so I can toggle through let me come down on the volume that's better I can toggle through by hitting the plus or the minus button so it works turn it off pull it out but um, so either USB or micro SD that's the format you use the, the pr procedure you use to format it and go ahead and load it up um, oh, yeah, something I wanted to share with you that, uh, before I forget, um, and that was the music that you load up on here. Let me, let me move my face out of the way again. The music you load up in, on here, I'm going to open that, that up again. Uh, just a little tip. There it is. Okay, so, good, get me out of the way. Let's suppose uh, a possible scenario of you're going to have a gathering with a bunch of people and you want to play some music, but you want to have it play in a certain way, or even that you wanted to create your own music mix, okay? And you want it to play in a certain sequence. You can do that by going into your file, all, the, all those files that you want to copy over to your USB drive, and go ahead and right-click on the file and rename it and put it in for the first one you want to play 01. 01 space name of file. For the next one you want to play 02. Rename it. 02 space name of file. Okay, whatever the name of the file is. Just leave it. Just put in 01, 02, 03. Whatever your sequence is for that particular song, put the number in front of it that you want it to be in. So, there's a little tip that might be interesting for you to play with. 
um, especially if you're going to be having a gathering or if you like to play around with uh, having a sequence of songs play in a certain way. So that is going to be that. I wanted to share that. I almost forgot to tell you. All right, so let's talk about the uh, next thing we're going to be looking at is the FM radio. And um, you're going to be surprised about this. I know I was when I found out. Um, the guy that showed me on YouTube, I'm going to leave his link down below so you can see. Um, and give him a thumbs up if you would. But the FM radio, let's open. Let's get me open up again so you can see what I'm what I'm doing here. All right. All right. All right. FM radio mode. Now, as you've already seen, if you've been playing with this thing, uh, and like I said, this is what I'm sharing with you here is not just for this particular model. You know, there are other Bluetooth speakers out there that have these same uh, features on it: the USB drive, the TF or the micro SD. They've got a radio mode, um, and some of them are not really easy to, to deal with. I was talking to somebody recently, and they they shared with me, basically, he's just going to use it for the Bluetooth. I said, well, do you know how to make the other parts of the of this device work? He said, well, no, not really. You know, he just kind of gave up. It, you, know, you know what I mean? And that's how most people are because i got to be honest with you. These directions are not very clear. They're not. They, they don't give you everything you need to know. So here I am. I'm struggling because I want to use the FM part. I want to use the FM speaker part, uh, radio part. Let me show you why. Because here, here's why. Here's why I want to get the FM radio part going. This is the current FM, AMF, AMFM radio cassette player I've got going on in my shop. And I, I, I got to tell you, I haven't played uh, cassette in at least a couple decades. It's been a while. So I'm thinking, you know what? I've got an opportunity where I can go ahead and upgrade to this. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to upgrade. All right. So enough of that. Let me get back down here. Let me show you. All right, so let me show you how to do that. Let me show you how to get the FM radio part working. So first, let me demonstrate that it does work. Turn on this guy, Mr. Loudmouth. Power on. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Okay, let me turn off these lights, these annoying lights. Thank you. Radio mode. Radio mode. I'm listening to FM radio. I can change the stations by hitting the plus or the minus. Alright, so, yeah, I know what you're thinking. How did he get there? How did he, how did he do that? That's the reason why I'm watching this video. <laughs> how did he do that? Okay. And uh, believe me, I struggled with it. And like I said, um, I'm leaving a link to a, a fellow that's got a YouTube video that shows you how to do this. But I'm going to show you right here. Um, most people don't realize this particular model and models similar to this, they have an antenna. It's the charging cord. The charging cord is the antenna. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this charging block on here because it's going to make me easier to leave the antenna up high you know I'm hanging it off the back of my other monitor here um, I can also when I once I get the FM radio going and I'm listening to it I can set it on my set it over here and, and put the antenna up high We're using that block it's going to keep it stable it's going to keep it in place so that's the antenna so all right so here's the antenna and I've already got this one tuned in. I'm going to put this off to the side. I'm going to use this other other device because, like I said, I got two of them. I got one for my wife and I got one for me. And uh, so began my journey in trying to figure this thing out. Um, so let's turn this guy on. Power on. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. All right, let's go to radio mode. Radio mode. <laughs> Turn it down. I'm going to turn these lights off. Sorry, I hate those lights. All right. So what I'm going to do is, to get this to lock in on stations, what you're going to do is, you're going to push on the play button when you're in FM radio mode. 
push on the play button, it's going to start scanning. It's going to take a little while because it's got to go through 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz. So it's going to take a little while. So hit the play and go ahead and put the antenna up and let it go through. As it searches through, just like it does on your car radio when you're scanning, it's going to grab, lock in on whatever strong signal it picks up. Then it's going to move on to the next one. And all it's doing at this point is it's scanning through, finding those strong signals, locking in on them. So once it's completed, once it's done, you'll be able to just plus or minus to go through the stations. At this point, I also want to point out, once you've scanned in to uh, your stations, don't hit the play button again because it's going to start scanning again. Okay. And it takes a little while. You'll know it's finished scanning when it locks in on a particular station and, and it keeps playing that station for longer than like these two second intervals that you're hearing as it's going through. Once it's finished, it'll play that station. All right. So we're almost there. Just give it a second. All right. It sounds to me like even though we're here in static, it sounds to me like it's locked in. It's searched through all of and locked in on all of those stations that are available. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to use plus or minus, and I'm going to scan through and find a station I can play. I'm gonna hold this up. There we go. No, I just want to let you know that sometimes you're gonna lock into a signal. It's not gonna be anything uh, coming through, but it's gonna have to keep toggling through. Weather conditions have effect on it. Where you are, you know, like I'm downstairs. If I was upstairs then you know I'd be getting a stronger signal to lock in or even if I was in my workshop I'd be able to lock in to signals a lot better so once you're done scanning through you can toggle through and you can get those stations there we go and that's how you get your radio to work the radio has an antenna the, the antenna is the charging cord all right so play with that you'll get it to work You'll find out what conditions are best for you in order for you to lock in on them. Um, and that's what we got to say about the FM radio. Now the phone, the phone part is going to work when you're blue jacked into your phone. And let's say you're listening to a podcast or whatever. You're listening to something on your phone and you receive a call. And um, it'll say receiving a call. At that point you can just hit on the phone button that's on the top. There's a phone button there. Hit on that phone button and answer the call. The call is going to be um, a speakerphone call at that point. So whoever you're talking to, if you want it to become a private call, then what you're going to need to do is, um, when the call is active, there's going to be a Bluetooth icon that comes up. Hit that Bluetooth icon and go ahead and finish your call because, like I said, it's going to be on speakerphone. The other thing is, if you're going to be on for a long period of time, the reception on the other end, when I, I had tested this with my wife, I had her call me and I asked her, how's the reception? She said, you're coming in a little muted. So on their end, they're not going to be able to hear you as clearly. Um, I don't know if it's a matter of maybe I was too far away from it because the nearest I can reckon it was about, you know, a foot and a half, three feet away from me. And I didn't think of bringing it closer. I just wanted to get a, a raw test on it. So it might be a matter of, well, you need to get close to the speaker for the mic to pick up better. Or it's just a matter of, well, I really don't want to talk too long on speakerphone with this person. So let me switch over to private mode. And that's by hitting on the Bluetooth icon that comes up while the call is active. And then you finish your call. When you finish your call and you hang up, whatever you were playing on, you know, where you're blue jacked into your phone, whatever you were playing resumes playing. So um, it's really cool. I like this. Uh, speaker. I'm going to enjoy it for a while. There is uh, um, 
there's a need for me to upgrade as you saw I'm going to be using it for the FM radio part if you learned something from this video give me a like leave a comment um, check out those other videos I'm gonna have uh, as below in the comment section I'm gonna have links to these other uh, sites that I went to one of them shows you the sound quality I, I was not so interested in the sound quality as I was interested in the functionality and making this thing work so yeah, at this point all I can say is give me a like if you learned something give me a comment and enjoy your Bluetooth speaker thank you